and dessert auction. Any donations are going to go to our world missions and the decision was made because of what has happened with the earthquake in Turkey and Syria. Um, it will go towards the world mission of a disaster relief in Turkey and Syria. And so there's actually, um, uh, oh, look at that. Um, uh, we'll put that together very quickly. We do have, if you decide that you want to give money towards that, you can do that now or at the luncheon later. And we ask that um, if you can put earthquake or the advanced special number, which is 982450 um, on your, the memo line of your check, but also on the envelope, because you know how we use our little offering envelopes, there's extras in your pew. If you can write whatever, if you have specific giving other than general fund, if you can write that on the, um, the memo line that's there on the envelope, that's very helpful when we are putting where everyone is, um, where you want your giving to go, okay? So we thank you for that. Um, and it just makes it easier for, actually for Pat Barber, who um, puts all that into the computer for us. And we're very thankful for her being our financial secretary. And so that is one of our announcements that we are lifting up right now. This is super, super Bowl Sunday and Super Bowl Sunday. And so we have had a little friendly rivalry going on right now. And um, it looks like y'all are doing a fantastic job. We are too. Some people forgot there, but everybody, this will go to the Bartow Church Service Center and will be getting on out to people. Barbara had said this week they were able to do more. There was more food that came in from some other sources, but um, it's been pretty light on the ground. So what you're doing is gonna go right out the door to hungry people, so know that. Um, and that's, that's what we do together in the body of Christ. It is also the Valentine's Day luncheon. Everyone is invited. It was a potluck. If you brought something, fantastic. If you didn't, um, we will make do. And we have strawberry shortcake for dessert. The other desserts are what are being auctioned. So, and so it's um, a little bit of everything and just a fun time in Central Florida because it's strawberry season. So we, we thank you for that. Um, we are reminding you also that the Ash Wednesday service this year, which will be February 22nd, which is a Wednesday, um, will be at 530 at Asbury United Methodist Church. As many of you know, Asbury is in the midst of um, negotiations to sell their buildings to Main Street Baptist. It's a, it, and what they're going to do with those funds is they're going to become a storefront church, Asbury is, and continue in their ministries. And so this would be our last chance to have uh, an Ash Wednesday service in their sanctuary together with all tourists, United Methodist. So we're going to do that this year. And in fact, on Tuesday, um, we'll be, um, the, the pastors, we're Zooming together and um, finishing up that service. So we invite you to come at 530. The address is there, 1650 South Jackson Avenue to Asbury UMC. And we will have an Ash Wednesday service together. And then everyone who would like to is invited back to our fellowship hall, all the churches, and we're going to have um, Lenten soup and sandwiches. And we're starting a Lenten discipline of simplicity for during Lent in our Wednesday night suppers where it will be soup and sandwiches. <clears throat> no desserts. I'm sorry. It's a discipline. Um, there's actually a sign-up sheet that hasn't made it over here that um, is over in the other, other building. Um, but I'll bring it over here. There's a sign-up sheet if you would like to make soup, just a crock pot worth, and, um, or some sandwiches, about four or five sandwiches worth cut into quarters. That way we can try all the different kinds. So that is um, what we are doing. And then on that special February 22nd, we will start late for dinner. 
it'll be 6.30, 6.45, whenever folks get there. And then we will still have Bible study, and that will be at 7.15 in the library. Also, um, something that came out of our planning retreat from uh, yesterday is that we will be um, having some church coffee talks. Many of you have heard about different, different, um, seen different emails, heard people talking, seen different things about what's going on in our denomination. And so we're going to have a chance to talk together amongst ourselves and start to understand like the, what has led up to this time where we've had some, um, a lot of questions and a lot of, sadly, um, a lot of hurt and um, some division. And so we want to, we want to understand where we are and what's going on. So if you have questions about that, these are our coffee talks. And if we need to have more, we will. Um, But we're starting with Sunday, February 26th at 4 p.m. in the fellowship hall. So not next week, but the week after. And then not everybody can meet on a Sunday afternoon. And so we're doing one on Wednesday morning, March 1st at 10 a.m. in the choir room. And we will have coffee and probably some little lump, yummy nums. And so you are invited to come, and um, we're, we're going to talk. So that is, those are our major announcements. There's, um, there's a lot of other things going on. Please always, um, you should be getting an email with the church newsletter. Also, our website has the church newsletter. There's a lot going on. So um, we, oh, we forgot. Oh, we did get it in this time. Tuesdays now at 8 a.m. at Broadway Diner, the, the devotion breakfast group is starting to meet. Walt well, just raised his hand. So, so um, they're, they're a great group, and you are invited. You make it when you can. And so that's what we do. Same with our prayer Zoom. If you're interested in that, we can get you the link for that. Also, our own Dr. Richard Lake has shared with us about the Lakeland Concert Band, Valentine Concert, this afternoon. So you finish with the luncheon. We've got coffee at the Keurig, so you can have some coffee at the end of it. And then head on over to Lakeland, to Branscombe Auditorium at Florida Southern. And they have a pre-show starting at 1.30, but no, 1.45, but 2.30 is when the um, concert starts. So letting you know about that, our very own Richard Lake will be there, um, our, which we are very thankful for his trumpet playing skills and um, gifts and how he shares those with us and makes our, our, our service richer for that. And so, golly, that's a lot. Um, please make sure if you're coming to Wednesday night dinner, you RSVP. It is a um, covered dish, but we need to know how much fried chicken to have. So thank you so much, and now let us continue as the body of Christ, even in the midst of all of that, because it's all about being the body of Christ in Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. By the way, Jerusalem cross on the stole, this was a gift from the rites. So Jerusalem, remember we are Jerusalem. And then we go to Judea, Samaria, and the ends of the earth. And so let us continue to prepare our hearts for worship as we um, bring the light of Christ into worship.
And all God's people said, Amen. Amen. Did I already say, or just to a couple of you, that we are not having communion this morning? Um, we're talking about communion, and I thought about having communion and forgot to get it taken out. That's my mistake. I apologize. Hear this prayer of invocation. Dear Lord, we surrender all. All to you, our blessed Savior, we surrender. We lay our hearts before you. Enter in. Change us where we need changing. Strengthen us where we need strengthening. Empower us for your witness in the world. And all God's people said, Amen. Amen. Here, please stand as you are able and join together in the call to worship, which is based on One Bread, One Body, which the choir sang last week, number 620 from our hymnals. One bread, one body, one Lord of all. One cup of blessing which we bless. And we, though many throughout the earth, we are one body in this one Lord.
And you may be seated, and the children will come forward. And thank you, Zach, for singing with me today. There you go. was not great singing. This is great having four boys. We got Zach. And this is Dawson. And this is Micah and Danny. So, guys, we have something special happening this week. And you're sick. Okay. Zach, I want you to reach in there and pull out something. No, you can look. It's okay. Oh, pulled out some pretty roses. All right, Dawson, reach in there and pull out something. Oh, you know what that says? Be mine. Be mine? Be mine. Hold that up so everybody can see. Look at that, isn't that nice? Do you know a little girl gave that to me one year at school? And I still have it. Yeah, all right, Michael, what are you gonna find in there? Ooh, a heart. What does that say? Let's look. Be mine, my goodness. Danny, what can you find? Ooh, that's so pretty. All you need is love. Well, my goodness, look at all these things. What do you think we're going to talk about? Love. Love, yes, we are. Well, they're not, they're fake. <laughs> yeah, love. And there's a day this week that everybody thinks about love. You know what day that is? Valentine's Day. What? Valentine's Day. Valentine's Day, yeah. Valentine's Day's coming on Tuesday, February 14th. Yes, and we think about love, and we think about our friends, and sometimes you bring cards to school and give to your friends, little Valentine cards. That's always fun, isn't it? And give cards and candy, that's all so much fun. But you know, the, did you know that the first love came from God? Listen to that. Yeah, it does match, yeah. Okay, listen to, listen to me just for a few minutes. Did you know the first love came from God? God loved us before we even knew him. God loved us. And you know what he wants us to do? In the Bible, it says, a new commandment I give to you, that you also love one another, as I have loved you. That you also love one another. Yes, God loved us. So he wants us to love one another. Now, how in the world are we going to do that? We might be able to say, yeah, I love my friends. I love my mom. But you know, the best thing to do is to show it. Put love in action. Let's think about that. Let's think about mom. What can you do for mom that would show her you love her? And I'm not talking about just giving her a hug. Give her flowers. Right, give her flowers, yes. Can you think of something, Dawson? Can Listen to her when she says something. Oh, that's, that would be great. Be a good listener. <laughs> Michael, what can you do for Mama? I don't really know. What about, can you help pick up your toys? <laughs> I bet you can. Danny, can you think of anything yet? Something you can do? Up, picking up your shoes and your toys and all things like that. Do chores when she says so? Yes. When Mama speaks, we need to do it, right? Oh, yes. Because when we show love, that really helps people know that we love them, don't, doesn't it? So it, if we need to really think about that, what about at school? What could you do for a friend at school, Zach? Um, give a girlfriend some flowers, maybe? Well, you could. But
but when you're at school, maybe if somebody drops their pencil, what would you do? Pick them up. Yeah. For them. Yeah, you pick it up and hand it back. Right. It's little things like that. What if they fall down and everybody starts laughing? What should you do, Dawson? You should help them up and say it's not funny. Exactly. Help your friend. Yes. And what if somebody spills their crayons everywhere? You help them clean it up. Oh, yes. You help them clean it up. And Danny, what if you're outside on the playground and somebody falls down or hurts their knee? What would you do? You could help them up. Yeah, help them up and take them to the teacher and let them, yeah. Yeah, things like that, guys. We need to think about that. Look around and help people because that's what love is all about, isn't it? Love is all about helping people. Okay, we can put it over here. Yes. So this day on Valentine's Day, and not just, not just on Valentine's Day, but... How do something else? When somebody's going fast, you maybe need to say, stop, you're going too fast. That's exactly right. You make a good policeman. <laughs> but not just on Valentine's Day, but every day we need to show love to mom, dad, brother, sister, and help people. Help people. Oh, yes. Another way we show love, now this isn't just in family or at school, but, but Zach noticed we have, he said they look like water towers, um, but we put food in these two baskets so that they can go to hungry people. And that's another way to show love, is to help hungry people so that they're not hungry anymore. Yeah. So, and given those coats too, and all the things that our church does, we reach out and help people. Okay, well, let's pray, and then you're going to be going to children's church pretty soon. Okay? And y'all can talk in there too. All right, let's bow our heads so we can pray and ask God to give us ways to help people, okay? Dear God, thank you for these children. And Lord, just bless them and help them to grow up to be good Christian men and help them to. As, they, as they're growing up, to reach out and help other people, Lord, and not just sit back and look and laugh, but to reach out and help. And just thank you for loving us, for sending Jesus to die for our sins. We love you, Jesus. Thank you. Amen. Oh. My flowers look like a mop the mop. Oh, uh, well, that's true. Okay.
People said. Please stand as you are able as we join in the affirmation of faith, the Apostles' Creed. It's found in 881 in your hymnals if you would like to see it there. Otherwise, it's on the screen. And at this time, if the children would like to go to Children's Church, they are invited to do so. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead, ascended into heaven, and sitteth at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty, from thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. seated. Our scripture reading this morning is from 1 Corinthians 10, 16, and 17. And we continue on our journey of living out our baptismal vows. And so we have been talking about how um, we live out our vows in community, in justice, and mercy and humility. We live out our baptismal vows in the world, and we are empowered to continue to live out our baptismal vows in communion so that we can go forth as people who do love God and love others and seek to live in peace with one another. And so this week, we are beginning a sort of new part of this living out of our baptismal vows. Yes, through baptism and communion, our sacraments, but also in our life together. And so hear these words that Paul speaks to the church at Corinth, and the church is um, in turmoil, and they're, um, they're going at it with one another, and they've got a lot of differences. And some things are things that are legitimately need to be dealt with. And there's other stuff that's just divisiveness. And so he reminds them of this in 1 Corinthians 10, 16, 17. Is not the cup of thanksgiving for which we give thanks a participation in the blood of Christ? 
And is not the bread that we break a participation in the body of Christ? Because there is one loaf. We who are many are one body, for we all share from the one loaf. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. Dear God, this morning, whenever this is heard, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be pleasing to you, O Lord, our God, our rock, and our redeemer. Amen. And again, I'm reading. Again, we'll see how it goes. Today we are reading from 1 Corinthians 10, 16, and 17, and looking at how in the sacrament of communion we continue to be incorporated into God's mighty acts of salvation that are begun at our baptism. Hold on to that word, incorporated. Those of you who were at the planning retreat yesterday, this is where you got a little bit ahead. In baptism, we are claimed, empowered, and initiated into the church, which is God's gift to the world. Did you hear that? The church is God's gift to the world. Baptism is God's gift to the church, as we are initiated into the church at our baptism. Which the church, what is it? The body of Christ, that one loaf we just read about. In communion, we are invited to continue our journey of salvation. That's what we talked about last week. We are invited to then become an invitation to others. We are confronted with the reminder that baptism is the beginning of our beautiful relationship with God in Christ, but not the culmination of all God offers us. What we seek is to be like Christ, to love God with all we are and love our neighbors as ourselves, to grow completely into the image of God in which we are created, which is reborn in us at our baptism by water and the Spirit. Wesley, John Wesley has this way of talking about it, and he says, stamp new upon my heart your image each day. That's what happens. When we choose God in Christ, we are the image of God. The image of Christ is stamped new upon our hearts. And we are reborn through water and the Spirit. But we can't do it on our own. That's the whole point. We need the sustaining work of the Holy Spirit stirring in our lives to continue this work this mighty act of salvation that is begun when we accept Christ. We call this continued growth in our relationship with God and others sanctification. We've talked about that a little bit. In our Bible study, we're talking about prevenient grace, justifying grace, and sanctifying or sustaining grace. In the Methodist tradition, we speak of this sometimes as sanctification, as going on to perfection. It doesn't have anything to do with perfection as the world understands it. Being tall, thin, gorgeous, smartest, fastest, richest, famous, or whatever our culture is telling us at the moment is important. The perfection that we are talking about is the same perfection that Jesus means in Matthew 5, 48, when he says to the people, be perfect as your heavenly Father is perfect. When he preached about loving just not neighbors, but enemies in the Sermon on the Mount. This perfection is the wholeness and completeness that we see in Christ's life. And being perfected in God's love that's what it is. And that's what Jesus shows us. And like everything else we have talked about recently, this perfection is not something we can achieve on our own. It is only possible with 
God in Christ. Yes, absolutely. Going on to perfection is what is possible as we continue on our journey of sanctification, of personal and social holiness through the empowering of the Holy Spirit. Did you know that we are a people who are about personal and social holiness? That is why we both have prayer life that is individual and corporate. It is why there are things that you individually get called to, to hand money to someone that the Holy Spirit calls you to do that, or to give to earthquake relief if the Holy Spirit calls you to do that. Although that becomes part of that social where we work together and we, our monies together help do more. Or our single canned good becomes more canned goods and more canned goods and a uh, hundred canned goods so that people are fed. It's individual and social holiness. There's the inward and the outward. We are a people of both and because we understand that we are called to love God with all our heart, mind, soul, and strength and to love our neighbors as ourselves, that which is only possible through Christ. This is the abundant life when we experience the empowering of the Holy Spirit and we truly imitate Christ who showed us exactly what God's love and will lived out looks like. I could have put some more L's in there, but it would have been hard. This is what it looks like. This is abundant life. This is abundant life. That feeling that we got when we saw our children up here, that joy, abundant life, that sense of bubbling up when we get together and we have a good time, abundant life, that sense of peace and comfort when we are able to be there for a friend or our friend is there for us and they offer that solace or just that presence. This also is abundant life. This is what we are empowered to do through the Holy Spirit. As we mentioned last week, in communion we are not only invited into what God is doing for our own sakes, but to help continue the reconciling work of God in the world by offering ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us. That's part of our communion liturgy. We become a part of what God is doing. We participate in this kingdom, this kingdom of God. In answering the invitation to communion, we move more deeply into our relationship with God, and in partaking of the bread and the cup, we are, with the Holy Spirit's help, for the world, the body of Christ, redeemed by his blood, and made one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world. Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and the ends of the earth. In our scripture reading today, from 1 Corinthians 10, 16, 17, Paul reflects on this ever-deepening and multifaceted relationship that we have with God and each other. It is not, is not the cup of thanksgiving for which we give thanks a participation in the blood of Christ. It's a participation. And is not the bread that we break a participation in the body of Christ? Because there is one loaf. We who are many are one body, for we all share the one loaf. Each time we come to the table, we are a bit more transformed as we confess our sins, we conform more to the image of Christ. We grow closer to God and to each other. Our love and closeness with God empowers our love for strangers and neighbors, friends and enemies, family and those foreign to us. As we partake of the bread and cup, we are incorporated 
brought into the body of Christ, into the church, and are a part of God's gift to the world. The word incorporate, here's your Latin lesson for today. The word incorporate has its word, roots in the Latin word corpus, which means body. It is a blending of the word in, which means into, and corporare, which means, or corporare, into, which means formed into, formed into a body. Incorporare became incorporante, which means embodied. When we say we are incorporated into the church, which is the body of Christ, we are saying much more than that. We are saying more than just that we are gathered to do God's will. We are claiming to, as our liturgy says, be, be the body of Christ, to embody Christ, to act as Christ in the world. When we talk about being the body of Christ, we are being Christ in the world. Together, we can do this through the empowering of the Holy Spirit. This is who we are. This is the reason why Jesus, who is the light of the world, turns around and says in the Sermon on the Mount, you are the light of the world. Because let's face it, that is impossible if God is not with us. So how do we do this? by seeking ever closer relationship with God through the means of grace, also called spiritual disciplines, with the celebration of communion being a centerpiece of our practicing of the spiritual disciplines, also called means of grace. Communion becomes, as baptism is that starting point, communion becomes the centerpiece. It's why some churches have communion every week. It's why in some, especially in the Catholic tradition, mass with communion is every day. As we do this, as we are empowered to go forth, as we live out our bat baptismal vows to renounce the spiritual forces of wickedness, reject the evil powers of this world, and repent of our sin, we accept the freedom and power God gives us to resist evil, injustice, and oppression in whatever forms they present themselves, and confess Jesus Christ as our Lord and, our, put our whole, and Savior, and put our whole trust in his grace, and promise to serve him as our Lord in union with the church which Christ has opened to people of all ages, nations, and races, and according to the grace given to us, remain faithful members of Christ's holy church and serve as Christ's representatives in the world. Did you get that? I read it and I didn't. As we live out our baptismal vows, we are able to repent of our sins, reject the evil powers of this world, renounce the spiritual forces of wickedness, we are also empowered to accept the freedom and power gives us to resist evil, injustice, and oppression in whatever forms they present themselves. We also are then empowered to be able to confess that Jesus Christ is our Lord and Savior and put our whole trust in him. What that means is we put the call of Christ first. This is what we say when, what, when we say Jesus is our Lord and Savior. It's the same part of that great commandment. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, mind, soul, strength. In following after the example of Christ, who is God with us, we are loving God with all our heart, mind, soul, and strength. And therefore, in following the example of Christ, we wind up loving our neighbors as ourselves. But it's the example that we follow. Paul uses the the, the language of Christ is our Godhead, our, the, the head of the body, sometimes. And when we do that, we then serve and love one another. Everybody. 
And we do that together. How do we do this? By loving God with all our heart, with all our mind, and with all our soul, and with all our strength, and by loving our neighbors as ourselves. It's really simple, right? Right? Just turn everything over to God and just let go, let God. I love that saying. It's really great. And it's terribly hard sometimes, isn't it? So how do we do this? Part of it is just this continuous living of life. This gathering together, this coming to the table, all of this empowers us to do it. How do we do this? By serving beside the last and the first, the lost and the found, the insider and the outsider, the hated and the love, the famous and the infamous. By sharing the good news of the kingdom with the foolish and the wise, the ignorant and the learned, the destitute and the wealthy, by loving our enemies and praying for those who persecute us. Who did you just think about? Who was the one that you thought about when we said, serve beside the last and the first? Or the lost and the founder, the inside of that. Who is the inside or outsider you're picturing? Who is the hated or loved that you thought about in that moment? Hopefully, we like to think that we don't harbor hate in our hearts anymore. We're sitting in church together, people. Right? We're all chickens in this hen house. So we don't have any hate in our hearts. But sometimes... Maybe there's frustration. Maybe we don't call it hate. Maybe we just call it extreme dislike. But whoever that person that just needles us, we're called to serve beside them too. Whether or not we think they're good enough to serve beside us. Because you know, we're us. We're called to love each other as God loves us. That's what that great commandment is about. So it's hard, and it can sound impossible, but not with our saving God who loves us. I mean, our God entered history to be with us. Because, because in our creation, created in the image of God and the breath of life breathed into us, we, in our pride, a lot of times that's how we understand the fall, is that it was about Adam and Eve wanting to be more like God or just not follow the rules or go their own way because they had free will and they could. And so while God's love remained steadfast, our love failed. And God continued to love us and seek after us and make sure that we had some, um, a little more than fig leaves to cover ourselves. But there were consequences for Whatever, however we understand that disobedience, that pride. And the consequences were that things were not as good anymore. They were harder. And yet, they didn't have to be because God was still with us. And in it throughout time, had a covenant relationship with Abraham and then brought the people out of Egypt, saved them from slavery and death and renewed through the covenant, and yet our love still failed. God's love remained steadfast. Wandering in the wilderness, God was with the people. And then 
They go, we've got the leadership of Moses, and then Aaron, you did not know you were getting a history lesson today. And then they get into the promised land. Woohoo! Well, Moses and Joshua, excuse me. And with time, the people need leadership. And so God sends judges in those seasons. God's love steadfast. People, not so much. And by the way, they are us. And so, God's love steadfast. Ours, not always. Sometimes. And then, so we have the judges, but the people want a king. So they get Saul, and then they get David and Solomon, and then those kingdom splits and all of that. God is remaining steadfast, but the people are not. And so then the judge, the um, prophets, God sends the prophets, and oh goodness, what beautiful things and scary things the prophets say. Because if y'all do not straighten up and fly right, bad things come in. And sometimes, hello, Jonah. Sometimes the prophet would come and speak, and even if they didn't want to, Jonah did not want to go to the people of Nineveh. Remember the big fish out onto the land? Yeah. Do you know that he did not go there and be like, repent, kingdom of God is at hand. Repent, you need to change or it's all going to... He was like, repent, repent. He actually didn't say it very loud, but they heard. They were ready, and they did, and Jonah was mad about it. So sometimes the prophets that God sends, they're not very happy, but the people did listen. We could. We can. And we do. But still, we needed something more. And God saw it. And in the fullness of time, God sent his son. Not out of a desire to condemn us, but to save us really to save us from ourselves. And this is that outstanding, steadfast love that has always been here seeking us, seeking us, seeking us, chasing after us. This is what makes our life in Christ and our life as the body possible and this life as the body in the world possible. This is what we celebrate, and this is who we are. And so if we think that this beautiful love that we talk about, and it just sounds all pretty and impossible, it is not impossible, one, because nothing is impossible for God. Nothing. I believe um, Mary said that, right? Mary? who winds up having the child of God, who's engaged to a guy who then thinks, uh, I know that's not mine, and thinks I'll just divorce her quietly, because Joseph is a good guy, and he wants to do the right thing until God speaks to him, sends a messenger, an angel in a dream, and says, stay with her. So Mary has the support that she needs to go forward with this impossible thing that's happened. This is what's possible. Nothing is impossible with our saving God who loves us. Nothing is impossible as we remember God's claiming at our baptism and are thankful. That's how we remember our baptism. For those of us who are baptized as babies and cannot remember our baptism, what we remember is that we are baptized, that we are claimed. We are gods. And we are empowered by the Holy Spirit to do amazing things because we are salt and light. We are Christ in the world. Why? How do we know that? Because we're told by Jesus that we are the light of the world. And I don't know about you, but I will not call Christ a liar. I will believe him. 
and I might get tired. Do you get tired? We get tired. But that does not change the fact that God is with us and we are empowered for these things. So nothing is impossible as we partake of the bread and cup and become for the world the body of Christ redeemed by his blood. Nothing is impossible. Nothing is impossible with our triune God who creates us, saves us, and empowers us. Nothing is impossible. Just yesterday, we had a planning retreat, and we talked about a whole lot of stuff, and we put more things on the calendar, and we have a whole list of things that we're trying to figure out where they go to be the body of Christ in Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. And just in case, because some of us have just um, been able to be back together, Jerusalem is our church family. Judea is Barto. Samaria, Samaria is the Samaritans, the others, those who, who are not like us, or maybe even we have difficulty with and don't understand. And the ends of the earth, that's the ends of the earth. And it is possible for us to be the body. And it is possible for us to love one another, even in the midst of whatever is going on with us. So, look at that. So, what is your impossible that God is calling you to? What's the thing that you're trying to figure out right now? Maybe it's something you're partway there. Maybe it's something that all you have is the littlest, bittiest bit of an inkling. As we live out our, bow, our baptismal vows and our walk in Christ with the understanding further about our prayers, our living out our, our life in Christ with prayer through presence, worship, and Bible study and, and other things like that, through giving of our gifts, through serving God and one another, and through witnessing to what God has done in our lives. Let this be a time of discernment. We are coming up on Lent. May this be a time of discernment for all of us to where God is calling us, to what God is calling us to. Maybe it's more of what we're already doing. Maybe it's stepping back from something in a time of discernment to the next thing to step into. But whatever it is, it's possible with God. And all God's people said, amen. And so now, let us join together and share our joys and concerns. And then we're going to get to sing, I Come With Joy, which is just an amazing hymn. But what are the joys and concerns that we would share? We are still lifting up um, Bill and Joan Wright. Um, Bill is slowly doing better, but obviously not quite ready to be able to be at church yet. So please continue to keep them in prayer. We're also keeping those who are suffering and helping with the earthquake in Turkey and Syria. Others? We want to lift up, we want to do two things. We want to say, hey, Judy. And also, we want to lift her up because she's, um, she's got some stuff going on. And so we're lifting her up. And we are thankful for other um, folks who are with us for the first time. Did you like how I didn't point you out? Okay, she laughed really loud, so I'm allowed to say that's Judy Marlowe. Say hi to her. 
and I think are there y'all y'all sneak in sometimes, and so I'm and some of you are are been here and gone folks, so I'm not always sure. So I, I try not to point you out, just in case. Yes, Pat. Yes. Twenty. Eight? 28. So, yes, the Hoffs are celebrating their 28th wedding anniversary. <laughs> Married here in this church. Yeah, that's pretty good stuff. Um, did you purposely wait to get, to get married close to Valentine's Day, or was it more to celebrate your birthday? Both, okay. Right here. After church. Oh, that's cool. That's very cool. So they were married right here after church on a Sunday then. That's, that's very cool. Any others, that, any other um, joys or concerns? Yes, ma'am. Yes. Okay, we will be keeping, so your sister, after her long illness, has passed away, but she is with her Lord and Savior, and we will be keeping you and your family in prayer. Yes, ma'am. Thank you. And, and even though you know that and you have comfort from that, we are sorry for your loss, because it's still hard. So we will be holding you. If there's anything we can do, you let us know, okay? Yes, ma'am. Lois? Okay, so your daughter-in-law is having a, uh, a procedure on the 14th as a Valentine's gift. Yay. Okay, so Dorothy's daughter-in-law, we're keeping her in prayer um, on the 14th. Okay. Any others? It's good to see Lanny back with us. He says it's just a sinus infection. They've given him stuff, so it's okay to talk with him, even though. Um, sorry, Lanny. <laughs> but you should see how he makes fun. Um, uh, any others? Let us go. Oh, yes, ma'am. Okay, say the last part. Mary Swain, what happened? Sebring now. Mary Swain has been diagnosed with cancer. She a was a longtime member of this church. So we need to be keeping Mary in prayer. And she now lives in Sebring. Let us go to the Lord in prayer. Dear God, we thank you for all the ways that you love us and are with us. We thank you that you, out of your love, create, redeem, and sustain us. We thank you for coming to be with us and showing us your better way. Your love lived out new life in you through your Son, Jesus Christ. We thank you for inviting us into reconciled relationship with you that leads into deeper, more complete life in you and with all creation. As we strive to embody Christ in the world, empower us by your Holy Spirit to love, serve, repent, and forgive. Pour your Holy Spirit out and heal everyone, everywhere in mind, body, and spirit, as is only possible through you. Those who are suffering, dear God, it seems like not enough to simply say, dear God, heal them. But you are with them. May they be open to your presence and find comfort knowing that they are not alone. 
for those who are grieving, dear God, may they also feel the comfort of your presence. Even as we do ask for healing, physical, mental, and spiritual. And so we ask that you grant us the strength in your spirit to do what you call us to do, to give ourselves for others as we celebrate your claiming of us in our baptism, and thank you for the holy mystery of communion in which you have given yourself to us. We would be your body in the world. And so, with wonder and love, to be your body in the world, to be living after the example of Christ, we join our voices together and we pray as your Son, our Savior, taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. And so now, let us join together in the first verse of I Come With Joy, number 617, if you would like to see the music in your hymnals. Please stand as you are able. We're just going to sing the first verse. remain standing as we join together in the prayer of thanksgiving and just be warned we're going to see that again i won't preach so long that sunday hear these words of thanksgiving dear god bless these gifts tithes and offering so that they will be about your loving will at work in the world we ask all of this through your son jesus christ and all god's people said amen let us join together our praise song.
words of benediction. Oh, our God who loves us will climb every mountain, does and has, kicks down the walls, tears down the lies, conquers sin and death to fight for us, to seek us, Oh, God, of all of this, give us peace as we go forth to be your light and love in the world, the body of your Son, Jesus Christ, at work in Bartow and beyond, loving one another and loving your children everywhere because you first loved us. We ask all this through your Son, Jesus Christ, as we go in peace. And all God's people said, Amen. Amen.